Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we can see learning Python and today we'll talk about context managers or with. So why do we need those, what we can do with them and how they work. Let's start. So again, today we'll talk about context managers. So if you have never heard of them, those are kind of like that. With object as variable, do something. And today we'll talk about why we need those and how they can be applied to our code because those are really, really powerful. And with the last Python update, version 3.10, they became even more powerful because now we can combine more uh, many context managers into one. So I will not talk about that today because I have talked about in about that in the Python 3.10 video, but still today we're going to talk about why we need context managers and what are those. So I'm going to call them context managers or with, so both names are acceptable. And let's just start. So imagine that we have a simple program where we have a file, we need to open that file, file.txt and with the mode equals write. If you have no idea about files, then we just open a file here and we use mode w to write inside of that file. And of course we need to close that file. And between those lines, what we can do is use file write string from 10 divided by input from integer. So what is that? That is a simple program, it can seem pretty complicated, but still is very, very simple. So we just open a file with uh, mode w, so we will write to that file. We'll not read anything, we'll write to that file. Then we use file.write in order to write to that file to put some information to the file on our computer. And what we are doing here is we are using 10 divided by integer of input, so our user will write a value. In our case, it should be an integer because we convert it here. So for example, I write five and what what we are doing here is we convert that string from the input to an integer so for example if i write five it will be converted from a five in in a string to five in an integer and after that we divide 10 to that value so if i write five we will get two if i write two we will get five so we just simply divide the divide 10 to that value that we wrote and of course, when we are writing to files, if you have no idea about files, once again, we need to use strings. So we need to only use byte or string data. And because of that, we need to convert that result. So that for the result, which is the result of division to string. And after that, we can close our file. Actually, in that case, we can omit file close because still we'll just end our program. But if you don't know that, again, about file opening and file closing, Every time we open a file, if we want to write to it, if we want to read from it, we need to open a file descriptor. So we need to open a file stream. So what is that? File stream, it's like, imagine a stream of data. And if you don't close that stream, then maybe a problem. Because if you don't close the stream, you have, of, you, you have an, another open stream and that can lead to memory, that can lead to memory leaks. So imagine that you have like 10 files, you open all of them, and if you close all of them, everything is all right. But if you forget to close at least one, then you have memory leaks. So in some programming languages, you can't even open a file. So for example, if we open, instead of file.txt, we open, for example, image.png, and we write some information to it. If we forget to close that image, so close the file descriptor, so the file stream for that image, then we can have a corrupted image. So that can be very, very bad. And because of that, every time you are finished with your file interaction, you need to close that file stream. And yeah, that's kind of the idea. Now let's run our program to see if it actually works. It's just a simple program. So there are no context managers here right now, but let's just write, oh yeah, we need to write, for example, five. Process finished, and as you can see, we have YouTube. In my YouTube project explorer, we have file.txt. If we go here, we see 2.0 because it's a float, again, because we divide 10 to 5 is 2.0, so it's 2. Everything is all right. If I write, for example, 10, we will see 1 in file.txt, as you can see it right there. So now our program works. But once again, as I said, there can be a problem with opened files. So if we forget to close our file, if our file will be opened forever or for even some amount of time, so if your file is open but you don't work with it, then maybe something is not all right. It can be, there can be exceptions, but as Python then says, 
exceptions are not exceptional enough to break the rules. So the rule is that we need to close our files, file.close, every time we are finished with the, we are finished with the file interaction. So that is the rule. And in our case, what can happen here? Imagine that instead of just using, oh, sorry. Okay, now I think it's all right. Imagine that instead of using just a global scope, we have a function called write to file, something like that. And imagine that that function is being called from another, and we have it like that, or yeah, something like that, or maybe you can, go, can put it right here, so it doesn't matter. But imagine that function is being called from another function. And another function is being called from another, another, another. So we have a program that runs for some amount of time. Because in our case, if I just put write to file function uh, call right there, then we'll just call that function and we'll call the program. But imagine that our program will run for some time. Then what can be a problem? Again, we open a file, we need to close it. In write to file, there is a possibility that we will never, never close our file. So imagine that we use file equals open, so that um, line is being executed, then we use file.write, but what can happen in file.write? So now we have two problems as far as I am concerned. The first one is what if our user writes, uh, yeah, let's call our write to file function just to see the result, but you need to imagine that we have lots of functions that call each other and because of that, if we don't close the file, it will never be closed. Because once again, right now, if we will, if we will not close the file, our program will stop because, yes, yeah, you can see nothing in, nothing is in here, so we just call a function and then we stop. But if I would have something like while true, then maybe there can be a problem. But once again, it really depends. But imagine that we have lots of lots of lots of functions, classes, so our program works for some time. And write to file function is just a part of that whole application. And um, yeah, because of that, what we need to do here is always close our file. Okay, and now imagine that we run our program and we need to write some information. So we need to write our number. As a user, I can write ABC instead of a number and it will tell me invalid literal for integer with base 10. So that means that we cannot um, convert our input to an integer. That is one of the problems. And now imagine that we had an exception here. What happened? File equals open, it executed. File.write executed perfectly, but integer, well, uh, file.write did not execute, but integer input raised an error. So it threw an error. And because of that, file close was never called. So that is one of the problems. One of the problems why we need context managers. Let's get to them. So in some cases we have exceptions or we have lots of different things that mm, do not allow us to easily close our files. And because of that, what we can do actually is use try. So every time you see a code like that, what you need to do is rewrite that code. I'm pretty sure that I wrote it myself, but the most perfect example is using that. So you need to open a file. You need to open a file before try. Then you are trying to write some information. And after that, what you are doing is accept if you need it. So let's make accept value error as exception, print write integer. But after that, what you need to do is use finally. Finally, file close. So that is the perfect code. So in the previous example, once again, if we did not, if we had an exception, then we did not close our file. But in that case, we are using finally. And maybe you have, you had no idea why we ever need to use finally in try except because we can literally put it like that. But yeah, finally is very, very useful in those cases. So in some objects, in some classes, you need some kind of resource deallocation. So in our case, we allocate our resources here with open, but we need to deallocate them inside of file close. And that is one of the examples. But as you can see, that code is really, really messy. And that's why we are using context managers. So let's go to them. Once again, context managers can be used with everything, like literally everything. But I will show you them with files. So with open as file, like that. So let me just copy that line. Yeah, maybe I can use my mouse. Let me just copy that line. And instead of with file equals open, I'll write with open as file. So two of those lines, line number four and line number five are equal. Well, are, they're almost equal. But what we are doing here, we are opening our file. But in line number five, we are saying that you need to open an object and 
um, assign it to that variable, to the, to the variable file. And after that, we can work with that object with the indent of with. So if I'm using it like that, I still can work with that object, but let me just tell you that if you want to really show that, okay, your, mm, your object, again, it can be anything, because that's why I do not say files. It can be a file, but it can be any object. And I'll show you how we can achieve any object uh, with with. So how we can put any object, any class inside of with. So if you want to show that you are working with that context manager and you need to work with that variable, with that object, what you need to do is of course put an indent as you do it with functions, with ifs, with whatever. But what is context manager, what context manager actually does? So we open our file, we allocate resources here, then we work with those resources and then and the six line, when we don't have that padding, we deallocate those resources. So that's the whole idea. Once again, we allocate resources at the start of the width and we assign object, which is on the first place to the file, which is to the variable, which is put after s. So again, the, uh, the syntax is with object as variable. We assign it like that. So we open our object, we allocate some resources. Again, it can be anything. It can be, mm. we can open file stream. We can, I don't know, increment a value. We can, um, we can do whatever. We can call an API. We can open some streams. We can, I don't know, save something to the database. It can be anything. But the whole idea is that with in some classes, in some objects, what you need to do is in, at some point, allocate resources or execute some code and uh, after some other executions, you need to deallocate those resources or execute some other code. In our case, what is that? We open our file right here, and after we are done working with that file, we close it there. So we close it at the six line when we don't have that padding. But actually, what I'm what I want to tell you is we can still work with our file. So as you can see, I can still work with my file. But the the reason is that it will be closed. So let me just show it to you. As you can see, I just print file closed and it says true. So our file is closed. And that's the whole reason. But once again, if we're working with context managers, it's much more beneficial for us because first of all, syntax is much better. So now we can literally see that, okay, we are working with that file and we have that padding. Second of all, we are, mm, we are better off with like, we don't repeat ourselves. We are better off because of that. We use open here. Again, it can be anything and we use as file. And by the way, you can omit that. So if you want, you can omit that, but in, in our case, it's unu unusable. So we need to use file. So again, we don't repeat ourselves and we're better off because of that. And um, the most important advantage of with is that even if we have an exception, we will still deallocate off of, off of our resources. So imagine that you have an exception here. Still, we can have an exception, but if I run it right now, and I put, for example, ABC once again, as you can see, invalid literal for integer two, 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 everything's all right, but our file will be closed. Our file stream will be closed. And that is the most important thing. So with statement has try except finally inside of it. And that's why it's much more powerful than just using try except finally every time. And as you can see, I don't even call file close because my file is already closed when I exit my with statement. So that's how that works. And once again, you can omit that as file. For example, if we have file equals open, then we want to just use with, with file. And yeah, we can just do it like that. That means that you open a file here and after you are done with that file, you will just close it. But typically it's better to, if you're working with files, it's better to just open your object here. But in some cases, for example, if you worked with, if you worked with asyncio logs, so in asyncio module, we have something called log. And with locks, what we have here is async your lock. And uh, I think we have async with lock. So yeah, there is another async context manager for asynchronous programs. If you have no idea about that and you just started with Python, don't worry. But as you can see, we can we can omit that as, as something because it can be not as useful as in some other cases. So yeah, it really depends. But that is the most basic idea of context manager. Context manager is a statement that will allocate some resources and deallocate those resources at the end.
So that is the most basic idea. And now I just want to show you that in every object we have something called something called let me just find it next. Oh sorry, next. Yeah. Oh no, no, not next, sorry. Enter. Yeah, we have that. So in every object, what you can do is actually reassign that enter and exit functions. So enter is the function which allocates resources with the with statement with the context manager and exit, the allocates the resources with that with statement. So again, in every object we can with every object we can apply those techniques in order to have a context manager for our class. And that is much better. So if you have something where you need to first of all allocate resources and then deallocate resources, then of course you can use a context manager because it will be much more beneficial for everyone. I think you can you have already saw some examples in some famous libraries. So I don't know. That's just it's just really, really good. So always use it if you have it. And yeah, that's kind of it. So thank you for the watching. My name is Andrew and good luck.